All right, so we're going to go over a problem that was recently brought up over at c4dcafe.com over on the forums there. And this particular member was having an issue when using a hypernerb to help smooth out an extrusion that he made. So this is a common problem that a lot of people run into when using subdivision modeling. So I'm going to go over what the problem is and how to solve it. So this particular member had a cylinder, just like this one here, and he wanted to make an extrusion into this angled part here in the middle, and he wanted to tighten up the corners on that extrusion, but he was running into a problem. So let me just quickly show you what he had done and the problem that he was encountering. So he had a few polygons here that were selected, and did an inner extrusion on them to bring them inward and then just extruded them inward a little bit to about right there. Now if we turn the hypernerv on you can see that these corners are looking a little odd and the reason for that is because they're being rounded by the hypernerves but there's not enough horizontal segments there going around in a horizontal loop in order to help tighten up that corner. So what he had done was he took the knife tool in loop mode and he just made some loop cuts around the bottom like that and he made one up here at the top and we'll turn the hyperner back on and you can see now that those corners are looking a lot better. However, he wanted them to be sharper than this. Now I think this looks pretty good but he wanted them to be sharper. So perhaps you also are modeling something and you want your corners to be sharper than this as well. All right, so we've made the two horizontal loop cuts. So the next thing that would come to my mind offhand would be vertical cuts as well. So we'll take the knife tool and we'll make a vertical cut as well. Now because we don't have a cap on the top and we don't have a cap on the bottom, we need to be careful where we start our knife cuts from because if we start them from here you can see that they're not going all the way around so to ensure that the knife cut goes all the way around we need to start the cut up here at the top so we'll make the cut about right there and we'll turn the hypernerve back on and I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a line that goes down right here somewhat of an artifact and you can see it right there. It's more pronounced from this angle. You can see it going up here, and there's also up here at the top right there as well. So this is the issue that this guy was having, and he didn't know how to work around it because you can see just how sharp these corners are now over here. This is the way he wanted the corners to look. You can see they're nice and sharp as well as beveled, and it looks really good but he was getting really frustrated because of this problem. So I'm going to undo this a couple of times to get rid of that vertical cut and I'm going to show you how we can work around this to fix it. Alright, now I'm also going to undo this a few more times to get rid of these two horizontal loop cuts. Alright, so we're going to take the knife tool and we're going to go into line mode because the cuts that we're going to make here are going to be manual cuts. So we're going to start up here in this corner. It really doesn't matter where you start, but I'm just going to pick this corner up here. And this particular cut that we're going to make, I sometimes refer to it as the 180 cut. And what I mean by that is once we get to a certain edge, the cut is going to make a 180 degree turn and go back in the direction in which it come from. Now I don't really know exactly the correct term that's used to describe this type of cut, but I've just come to call it the 180. So we're going to start right here, and we're going to make a cut down into the extrusion, and we're just going to follow the flow of edges. So we're going to take this cut from here all the way down to the bottom, and then we're going to come up out of the extrusion and this is where we're running into the problem because if we were to take this cut on down the side of the cylinder here 
what's going to happen is we're going to get that artifact again. So in order to avoid this, we need to bring this cut up out of the extrusion. And as soon as we do, we need to immediately take the cut and turn it around 180 degrees and send it back in the direction that it originally had come from. So from this point here, we're going to cut to the middle of this edge here. And then from here, we're going to go back over to the side of the extrusion and then immediately go down into the extrusion and then cut across like that. Now, I know you're thinking, wait a minute, we just created two triangles there. That looks a little messy. Well, yeah, you'd be correct, but don't worry. We're going to come back to that in a little bit and fix it. So we're going to continue with these cuts to follow along the flow of edges here along the bottom. And when we get over here to this corner, we're going to do the same exact thing that we did in the other one. So once we get to the edge, we're going to come up out of the extrusion. From here, go down to the middle of this edge. Take it back up to the extrusion. Go down into it. And then immediately head up. And we'll take this up there to the top. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing here on this corner. We're going to come up out of the extrusion to the middle of this edge, immediately turn it around 180 degrees and send it back down the hole. We'll just cut across the top here following the flow of edges. That one there looks a little off, so I'll just undo that. And now we're coming back to where we originally started from. So we'll continue on, come up out of the extrusion, and then from here, go to the middle of the edge, and then back to the first cut that we originally made. All right, so if we turn the hypernerve on, we immediately get some very nasty tearing and shearing in there on all four corners. So in order to fix that, what we can do is solve the issue with the triangle. So what we want to do is from this edge here, make a cut up to the adjacent point up to there. And I'm just going to go into point mode. That way we can just see the points a little better here. And from this edge here, we need to cut and go down. But if we cut and go down, what's going to happen is it's going to go all the way down here to the bottom. And that's actually taking that edge too far. Now we also have this edge down here at the bottom. And we also need to make the cut for this one to go up. So if these two edges, if this one goes up and this one comes down, they're going to crisscross in the middle. That's going to cause a problem. So what I usually would like to do in this case, because we know it's not going to cause any problems for us, I'm going to take the knife over to loop mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut down here towards the bottom and then one up here towards the top like that. Go back to line mode. And now we can take and cut from here and tie that off to that corner there. Now, if we turn the hypernerve back on, you can see we got rid of the tearing, but we need to adjust these points in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the slide tool because the slide tool will help us keep all of the edges in line while moving the points. So I'm going to right click and choose slide and we just want to take these points and kind of just push them off in order to form a square shape there. Turn the hypernerve back on, and there we go. So we'll come down here to this corner, and we'll take the knife tool, and we're going to do the same for this one. Grab the slide tool. We turn the hypernerve back on again. That's looking really good. 
And of course, we can do these two sides over here as well. So I'll just quickly go through that again, just in case you've missed it the first two times. I'm going to cut in the middle of this edge and take it to the adjacent point over to this corner. And then from here up to here. Now these two edges that we just made by making these cuts, you want to keep these as short as possible. You don't want these going a very long distance. Otherwise, then you get a degenerate polygon face and you start running into problems. So be sure that when you make this cut to solve the issue with the triangle, just be sure that your face here is not elongated and that this cut doesn't go far off. You want to keep it close. So we'll grab the slide tool again and just move these points over. Same for that one. All right, so we got one more corner to do and I guess I'll go ahead and do that one. So we'll make the cut from here over to here and then from here to here. Slide tool one more time just to position these points in place. Hyperner back on and there we go. Now notice we don't have any of those vertical artifacts that we had earlier and the corners are really nice and sharp. So just to quickly recap what we've done here, what I'll do is I'll grab the doodle tool and I'm just going to grab a bright red color and I'm going to show you what we've done here. So with the knife tool, what we have done is we've started up here in this corner and we came down, made a loop, came back down around the bottom, came up and around, up and around, and then back. So that's basically what we did there. We just made one continual loop. We started up here, came down, made our loop, back around that corner, this one, just like that. And then we just tied off these edges here in order to solve the triangle problem that we had, keeping everything in quads. All right, so I think that about wraps up this lesson on this particular type of cut. More than likely, you're going to come across a situation where you're going to have to make this type of cut in order to keep your geometry nice and clean and avoid artifacts, especially like we saw here on the side of the cylinder. So that concludes this lesson, and thank you for watching.